Hey everybody, welcome to Sound Pure. My name's Paul, and today's video is gonna be another installment of our educational series talking about symbols. Last time around, we went over the chemical properties of symbols and how different alloys are gonna affect a symbol's tone. Today, we're gonna to go through the physical characteristics of a symbol and how the different factors that go into a physical symbol's shape, size, weight, those are all gonna have an impact on the way that a symbol sounds. And there's really five main categories and five subdivisions, if you will, that you can group symbols into. And those are going to be a symbol's diameter, the thickness of the symbol, the weight of the symbol, the symbol's size and shape of its bell, and the symbol's curvature or profile or bow. So let's jump right into it. So a symbol's size and diameter is going to be the most apparent uh, determinant of its size. A symbol that has a larger diameter but the same thickness as a smaller symbol is generally speaking going to be lower in pitch than that smaller symbol, but that's not the only determinant of a symbol's pitch. Another important factor to consider is the actual thickness of a symbol. A symbol that has just more mass in it, that's uh, it's going to have more thickness to it, is going to have a higher pitch. You can think high mass equals high pitch. Another uh, way that a symbol's thickness is going to affect your symbol's sound is by the way that it sustains and the way that it projects. Generally speaking, a symbol that's thicker is going to have more sustain and more overtones, but because of that extra mass, it's going to take a little bit more force to get moving, so it's not going to be as quite responsive as, say, a thinner symbol. So another really important physical factor, and in my opinion, one of the most important factors and something that I look for in my symbols, is gonna be the size and the weight of the bell. And the bell, or cup, is gonna be this raised area in the center of the symbol. Now, generally speaking, again, a symbol with a larger bell is going to be higher in pitch and is gonna have a more dry tone than a symbol with almost a flat bell that's almost non-existent. A lot of times drummers, especially metal drummers, who want bells that have a lot of ping and a lot of projection, they're going to be looking for symbols that have a nice pronounced bell, sometimes bells that even almost take up half the symbol itself, whereas a lot of modern jazz players, those guys tend to look for symbols that have flatter bells, some that aren't quite as pronounced and that won't project as much. That way the ride symbol sits in nicely with the mix. So the last factor that we need to think about when we're talking about the physical anatomy of a symbol is going to be the overall profile or bow or curvature of a symbol. So what the curvature of the bow is, is actually, like it sounds, it's going to be the way the symbol curves outward from the bell out to the edge. A symbol that has a steeper profile and a more pronounced curve is again going to be brighter and higher in pitch than symbols that are more flat to the edge. And symbols that have that more pronounced curve are generally going to be a little bit more direct, they're going to have a quicker attack, hence that perceived extra brightness. A symbol that's flatter is generally going to respond a little bit slower. If we looked at these in a spectrograph or on a waveform, a flatter symbol would respond a little bit slower and so you would have a bit of a lower pitch in that general curvature. So just to quickly recap on the general anatomy of a symbol, you've got the bell here, the bow or the body here that curves outward from the bell, and then finally we get to the edge. And if you want to think of it in terms of sound frequencies and where they emanate from, most of the high frequency of a symbol is going to start with the bell and the area around it. A lot of mid-range is going to come from the body and your low end is going to come here at the edge. And of course, most drummers know this, or at least I hope you know this as a drummer, playing a cymbal in a different part of the body or the bell or the edge is going to give you a different response. So coming up in a minute, I'm actually going to A, B a few cymbals for you guys so you can kind of hear how cymbals that have the same basic alloy properties and the same basic hammering and lathing patterns sound different when you apply different physical attributes to them. So for example, this here is a Zildjian K series Dark Crash, it's a 17 inch. This symbol here actually has a bit of a lower bell, smaller bell, and a less pronounced profile than the one that it's going to be A beat against, which is a Zildjian K series Sweet Crash. That one's going to have a slightly larger bell and a more pronounced profile. So when I play these two next to each other, you should hear more low end and more complexity from the Dark Crash, and more attack and high end from the Sweet Crash. So let's go ahead and hear them.
So that pretty much wraps up this gear tip on cymbals and how their physical properties affect your sound. I know this one was a little bit more information heavy than some other ones we've done in the past, but there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different physical qualities that go into making a cymbal, and we haven't even hit on hammering and lathing yet. There's a really deep rabbit hole that you can go down, which in my opinion makes hunting for cymbals much more fun. So if you have any questions about anything that we talked about today, or you want a little bit more clarification in terms of finding a cymbal that might be the right fit for you, give us a call here in the drum department and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thanks a lot for watching and tune in next time.